Do you believe in global warming? I want no. to say that we share a tremendous based thing on, all of our country. We love the based values on the lies. that she represents. Why the hell you have to force something when you go, if, I mean, if you're going... The Tea Party and other global warming science deniers believe that global warming is a hoax that the whole world is playing on us. They believe that it is a worldwide conspiracy meant to trick them, much like the other grand worldwide conspiracy of evolution. The conspiracy that all vaccinations are a secret government plot And the other worldwide conspiracy that this brown guy is secretly a Muslim and secretly a foreigner come here to take our job. Consequently, Muslims and foreigners are both things that the Tea Party are deathly afraid of. So, I'm going to explain global warming using pretty pictures and simple language, because really this is grade school stuff. Open up your sixth grade textbook and read along. The Earth and the Sun are in outer space. Rays from the Sun hit the Earth, warming it. Our shiny oceans, polar ice caps, and other surfaces reflect the sun's rays back up towards outer space. The layer of greenhouse gases that surrounds our planet traps some of the heat before it goes out into outer space. From here, the heat spreads outwards in every direction, some back towards outer space, some back towards the planet. But this is okay. This has been going on for a really, really long time. This process is how it stays warmer here than it is in space. It's cold in space. But the last few generations of man have been adding a different factor into this equation. We've been adding our own air pollutants into the layer of greenhouse gases that already surrounds the planet. Now, I've heard a certain AM radio talk show host say that these greenhouse gases, the more and more and more of them that are put into the atmosphere, it's actually better for the trees. They eat them and make pretty clean air for us. This is, of course, crap. Trees like water, too, but you don't go drowning all of them. That would kill them. You see, too much of these gases in the atmosphere is not good. It also doesn't help the trees that we're cutting them down quicker than they're growing. Personally, I'd like to say screw the trees. I like good furniture. But science tells me that we actually need the trees. They produce oxygen. And science tells me that we need oxygen to live. So the layer of greenhouse gases around our atmosphere keeps getting thicker as pollutants are added to it. These pollutants consist of air from our cars, our factories, and other hot air emissions such as bovine gas. But, can all these gases being emitted into the air really be that bad for it? They come from the United States and China, mostly, and everyone knows that we make the best quality stuff. But, let's see what happens when this new and improved man-made layer of pollutant gases gets up into the layer of gases that's already there. The thicker layer traps more heat as more heat is emitted up into it. Heat makes things warm. Polar ice caps melt. The overall climate is thrown out of whack. New warm air intrudes on formerly cold spots, creating winds and changes in weather patterns. You start getting heat waves where you shouldn't, such as here, and cold fronts where you definitely shouldn't, such as here. Added heat around the polar ice caps causes more wetness to evaporate up into the air. Because climate change is a very slow and gradual process, winter still exists. So when winter hits, all this moisture that's been sucked up into the air comes down as a mess load of snow, sometimes in places that you normally wouldn't even get snow. But thanks to climate change, the whole mess load of moisture that's been evaporated into the air makes it possible. Some Fox News pundits like to say that because it snows in winter, climate change must be a hoax. No, these people are idiots. I'll repeat this one more time just to make sure that it sticks. Climate change is a very slow and gradual process. Lots of moisture gets taken up into the air because of the overall raise in Earth temperature. When winter does hit, places that normally wouldn't have a whole lot of moisture in them get a lot of moisture. Winter hits, snow comes down, and there's a lot of it. For the rest of the year, it's really freaking hot. Overall, the Earth is getting hotter. This is actually very easily provable looking at any sort of scientific trend in temperatures. Let's use, say, NASA as a source. Yes, that NASA. It's not that they're in on some weirdo conspiracy. This is actual science. Now, all that I've said so far isn't really news. 99% of the world's scientific community has agreed on this for quite some time. So if the rest of the world and the vast, vast majority of the scientific community can agree on global warming science, why is it that right-wing radio talk show hosts refuse to accept global warming? 
Why is this a vast conspiracy theory as far as the right is concerned? And the left and the rest of the scientific world believes that it's actual science. What makes this difference? Why has this been politicized? Well, I believe we have this guy to thank. Thanks. In the 90s, when a guy got into politics on the Democratic Party on a platform of global warming and saving the ozone layer, people on the right, Rush Limbaugh, drew a line in the sand. If you're a liberal, you believe in global warming. If you're a conservative, you don't. Of course, this is utter bullshit. Science really doesn't take a Republican or Democratic side. But the far Republican right wing in America seems to be pushing this global warming is a giant hoax platform. They find the bottom 1% of discredited scientific nobodies from around the world, put them on their show, and get them to spout whatever they want, not daring to challenge them even once on their scientific merits. You see, the big argument is, and you'll hear this a lot from Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, that global warming science can't be trusted because Al Gore makes an awful lot of money off global warming. The Tea Party and other right-wingers hear that, and they repeat it. It gets ingrained in their heads. Of course, they make an awful lot of money off this global warming. Well, I guess if you're following that logic, you can't trust people who are pushing an agenda if they're making a whole lot of money off pushing that agenda. But wait, who's the biggest named global warming science denier out right now? Uh-huh. According to Forbes magazine, he makes over a hundred million now with daily spouts of incoherent ramblings, mostly of which are conspiracy theories such as don't believe in global warming, it's a secret government plot. And guess who makes seven times that much spouting the exact same thing? Yeah. Yes. Al Gore makes an awful lot of money off global warming. Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, and Fox News make an awful lot more money telling people to not believe in science and that they're the only real source of information you should be coming to. So as for the argument that global warming is wrong because Al Gore makes a lot of money, not only is that wrong, it's moot. Because who you really should be listening to, instead of any political hack or AM radio shock jock, is scientists. They're a good source for science information. Here's a short list of some of the more reputable, bigger name scientific communities out there who have come to terms with agreeing that man-made global warming is real. I've gathered my sources. Starting with NASA, the World Meteorological Organization, American Meteorological Society, National Center for Atmospheric Research, American Association for the Advancement of Science, National Science Foundation, the U.S. Geological Survey, .gov, Geological Society of America, United Nations Environment Program, United States Energy Information Administration, .gov, UK's Royal Society, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Basically, any country that is science literate, from Japan to Australia to New Zealand. We could keep going, but we'll end it with American Geophysical Union, the world's largest scientific society. Some people have a way of sticking to their views at all costs, never admitting that they're wrong. Even what it means having to accept fringe conspiracy theories just to find any way to support their provably false views. Whether it's proof of Obama's American birth, or scientific facts and sources to support climate change, no amount of evidence will deter some people from admitting that they're wrong and changing their views accordingly. I can tell a Tea Partier that NASA and the vast, vast majority of the world's scientific community around the globe believe that global warming is real, and they'll chop it up to the scientists being in on the conspiracy. After all, Glenn Beck and Fox News told them that science isn't to be trusted, and that they're really the only news source to be trusted. What do you make of it being, uh, according to world records, uh, heat and temperature analysis, uh, that it's the hottest decade recorded in human history? I don't trust any of the data at this point in time. Okay. I was going to go through and list a few of the things that and I don't, and predicting, I don't trust the scientists. Behind. Of the major news networks, which one, if you watch them, do you watch the most? Fox News. The only news.